The White House has been dealing with very bad poll numbers for months now. Gallup, Pew Research, ABC News and CBS polls all show President Biden's approval rating at terrible lows. But Vice President Kamala Harris can explain. Low unemployment, millions of jobs created, inflation down, the stock market up. You don't hear that much from reporters, do you, <laughs> in, in the form of a question? And yet, <laughs> and yet, you and President Biden's approval ratings are at historic lows. Why do you think that is? So you're right, we have a lot of accomplishments. And I think what the American people want most in their leaders is that we actually get things done. And we have done it. We haven't taken adequate credit for it, frankly. And we got to do a better job of getting the word out about what we have accomplished and who did it. Another concern the VP has is her height on Wikipedia. Why did I think you were much taller? I re recently learned you're only 5'2". Is that, that true? That is absolutely incorrect. Okay. <laughs> I am 5'4 and a quarter. Okay, and I'm 5'3". Five, five, three. Four and a half and with heels, which I always wear, I'm 5'7 and a half. Thank you very much. Okay, Wikipedia, you're wrong, and we I'm need totally to correct wrong. that. I've said this to my team, like, what? I don't know where it came from. They just want to just make us smaller in every way. I know. Lisa, she is on a media tour and she's defending her height and her record. What do you think about those comments? I mean, I think the beauty for Joe Biden is he can be like, look, I'm not the, the least popular person in my administration. There's always Kamal. <laughs> I, mean, I guess the beauty about the problems we're facing now is they can't gaslight us, right? Like, they can't say the economy's strong. Everyone knows they're paying more. They can't say the border's secure. We're seeing the invasion happen. They can't say we're safer. We're seeing the wars that are taking place throughout the world. Uh, so they can't gaslight us. I mean, I, I think this White House, if you wanted to make the case against diversity, equity, inclusion, you just point to this White House, right? Every single person from Kamala to the cabinet secretaries to Karine Jean-Pierre as press secretary, world chosen as box selecting exercises as opposed to on a merit base. And the results speak for themselves as you look around and everything is falling apart. So, you know, at least they're making the case against that. So yeah. hopefully we can get back to a more sane country. Yeah, and we, Tammy, we showed some of the poll numbers and one of the uh, big concerns, even more so maybe than the overall poll numbers is when you get really deep into the numbers and you see that Former President Trump is up when it comes to black voters, Hispanic voters, youth voters. He has he's up in some of the swing states. You just heard the vice president there say that it's a messaging issue, that they're not getting their message out in the right way. Is that what's really happening here? No, I think they're getting out exactly the message that they think is important, like in that interview. She's not thinking about why people think the economy is bad because their individual lives with energy and food prices, it is bad. She thinks it's about her and her height. It's she's paranoid. It's literal narcissism where she thinks everything's about her. And the answer to that question, what people I think would have appreciated, especially young people, is her saying, you know what? Nobody cares how tall I am. What they care about is the fact that we've helped change the trajectory of inflation. It's getting better. I know about she needs to turn it around. I know that young people are having trouble with certain things. We've been focusing on that. We haven't been messaging on that. I'm messaging on that right now, et cetera, but they can't. And it shows you what they've th only been thinking about themselves, what's happened on Wikipedia, winning a news cycle, controlling the nature of a message. It, and this is Carter's problem. And that's maybe why their numbers are similar to Carter's. He micromanaged and it all was about the nature of how he was perceived. And Americans don't like it. We notice it. They're clearly not making a change. They're not understanding that, oh, those people matter. And that's going to continue yeah. on for this year. And she's a perfect example of, of that problem. Yeah, and Paul, when it comes to messaging, it, the Biden administration has made it clear what they're running on, abortion and the fight for democracy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those do seem like niche issues in the face of national security, crime issues in cities across the country. Seems like those could be secondary. What do you think about that? Yeah, they. I think they're locked into an echo chamber of uh, pundits and advisors who only exist. They're a r weird genus of human being that only exists inside the Beltway, <laughs> and they're all trying to convince each other that they're right. And you know, I, I, it goes back to when Reagan won in a landslide. Pauline Kael writes for the New Yorker. Oh, did you know she's mm -hmm. she's dead now? But. She said, I can't believe he won. I don't know anybody who voted for him. <laughs> yeah, well, you don't know. And that's the <laughs> classic story. It's just they don't understand that in the flyover states and other areas, people are really feeling these things. And relative to the vice president here, this has got to be 
the single biggest political draw, uh, ball drop in history. If you think about it, who else is so poised to ascend to the presidency as the person that's next to Joe Biden after the last three years, right? All she had to be, she's, you know, he wanted a black female, he got her. All she had to be was reasonably competent. Yeah. And remember, he gave her the border. She was supposed to be the border czar. Results speak for themselves. Yeah, during that interview, she said, I'm not in charge of the border. She was a senator. She was an attorney general of California. On paper, it seems like it's all there, and it's just not translating. Emily, what do you think? You could take the height. You could take the uh, blame the blame game. What are your, th what are your um, thoughts? I know, it's all the yeah. subject yeah. user. I love it all. I'll just take the fact that when pressed on a record, and, and pressed is, is a pretty strong verb there, she responded with, well, we have multiple infrastructure projects going and student debt. Those were her two examples of her accomplishments in office before she said the messaging just isn't out there. This from someone where the irony is half of that interview was about her height. The softball questions that this mainstream apologetic media has consistently levied their way, and yet they claim the messaging's not on their side? Are they joking? When you talked about the gaslighting, Lisa, everything that you said, I was literally like, no, that's exactly what the mainstream media Thank says. You. Remember, they, they say that, that Trump is fear-mongering about the border. They say that actually violent crime is down. They say that, oh, Hey, everyone, the jobs are back without referencing the, the skyrocketing prices and inflation. So it is absolutely a messaging bonus for them. She gets to wake up to Christmas Day every day. My biggest waste of taxpayer dollars, however, are on her salary because that when she makes it about herself, when she has nothing to say with specificity or articulation about her accomplishments, I mean, I want my money back. Yeah. Well, at least we all now know that she's a little more than 5'4". Yeah, can Not by two. Yeah. No, so there's that. Yeah. We know her height. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.